Good afternoon, I'm Laura Kuchkowski, and beside me is be the beautiful Jessica Maltnick with our last Sports Mag broadcast of the 2016 school year. And Jess's first time on the desk. Big debut. And of course, I make no promises today that I won't cry, but if I do, Jess will take care of the rest. That it will do, Laura. That it will do. We've got an exciting show. We will break down our top moments of the year. We have lacrosse, tennis, golf, pro sports, and why our mascot is the greatest in the pack. Let's kick things off with women's golf. The women's golf team headed to Pleasanton, California this past Wednesday for the Pac-12 tournament. The Buffs recorded the lowest 54-hole score in postseason history, bringing the team its second straight fifth-place finish. The Buffs posted an even par 864 for the tournament. Number two, Southern California took the conference title ahead of the fields that had seven schools ranked in the top 15 nationally. The Trojans, UCLA, Arizona State, and Arizona were the schools to beat the Buffs, all of whom were ranked in the top 15. Following the Pac-12 tournament, officials named the All-Pac-12 team. Junior Esther Lee was named to the team for the second time in her three-year career, becoming the first buff golfer to be named to the All-Conference team twice. She led the team with a 72.48 stroke average and set a school record for lowest score with a 64 in the East-West Match Play Challenge in the fall. In her 27 rounds of golf this season, she has recorded four eagles and 81 birdies and shot an even par for the Pac-12 tournament. Well, in honor of our last show here at SportsMag, we wanted to take a couple minutes to look back at this past school year. Alex Doyle and Ferris Cobble are in studio to break down what they believe were the top five moments. Take it away, boys. Hey, Buff fans. I'm Forrest Cobble. This is Alex Doyle. And we're going to break down the top five moments from the 2015-2016 season in this edition of Double Team. So, without further ado, what's number five? Number five is the cross-country team finishing second in the country. This would be a little bit higher, but the men's team was coming into that race as the number one seed, so they did get upset by Syracuse, who ran a very good race. The men also ran a good race, but the women ran a very, very good race to also finish second, which helped the team get the second overall as, as a team. So that's number five for me. Forrest, what's number four? I thought the number four moment was the ski team finishing second overall nationally. Uh, incredible season. Yeah, they uh, came into that tournament again trailing the number one uh, spot, and they won last year. But coming into the final day, they had a few spots to make up, and the men's Nordic team did a really good job, placed four people in the top ten to help propel them past Utah and forced Utah to take number three. We couldn't pass DU, but DU's a very strong team. So that's number four for me. What's number three, Forrest? Number three we have uh, the men's basketball team appearing in the NCAA tournament. Obviously, last year they missed uh, a chance to play in the big dance, but this year, though they got beat in the first round by UConn in a disappointing comeback uh, win for UConn, uh, definitely an exciting way to cap off a season to make the NCAA tournament uh, on the backs of a few really impressive upperclassmen. Yeah, very, very good. Very good. That's deserving. So what do you have at number two? Number two, I'm going way back to September. Football game against CSU. Won the game in overtime. Gamboa caught that, that. He picked that ball off that led to the game-winning field goal down in Denver. So that's number two for me. Forrest, what is the number one play of the 2015-2016 school year? Well, I think this deserves a drum roll. And the number one is the court storm in cores against the University of Arizona. Men's basketball, uh, U of A was number nine in the country at the time, and the huge favorites heading into this game, but CU was able to defend the home court, Coors Event Center, uh, in a fantastic victory. Uh, Alex Trier had that three that he shot up with, I think it was two seconds left, and as soon as he missed that, uh, the CU fans stormed the court, celebrated, it was a fantastic moment uh, for both the fans and the players, and really the zenith of that fantastic CU season. Yeah, it was very, very exciting. So that's all the time we have for Double Team this week in the final edition. I'm Forrest Cobble. And I'm Alex Doyle. Back, Back to, you, to guys you guys at the desk. Thanks, guys. Just like the school year, the tennis team is wrapping up their season looking for a strong finish. They will finish the 2015-16 season at the Pac-12 Championships this weekend in Ojai, California. CU finished its season with a 7-15 record overall and is a 2-8 finish in the Pac-12, which matches their best conference record since joining the league in the 2011 season. 
Colorado tennis player Nuria Ormeno Ruiz moved back into the Intercollegiate Tennis Association's national singles ranking this week. The junior is climbing her way back up, taking the 120th spot. She has been ranked as high as number 74 this season. So I think it's safe to say we should be watching her in the upcoming matches. Ruiz and the team, tennis team are competing at the Pac-12 Tennis Championships in California. For the last time this season, we're requesting that you stash those laptops and close those tablets because it's time for this week's trivia question. As we mentioned earlier, CU golf superstar Esther Lee has been putting up very impressive numbers. In fact, she's tallied up a team best 10 finishes in the top 20 this season. That puts her in tie for a second most top 20 finishes in school history. So this week, we want to know who she tied with. Stick around and we'll have the answer at the end of the show. Coming up next, college basketball may be over, but we do have two former buffs shooting for a championship. And remember that snowstorm last week? Well, the lacrosse team does. And that, all that, and after the break. Colorado women's lacrosse went up against California for their first ever senior day last Sunday. And in a snowstorm. Thankfully, though, they came away victorious. The Buffs came out on top with a double-digit margin, the final score being 16-4. It was the first time in three tries against Cal in the young history of the CU program. The Buffs wrap up the regular season on Sunday in Oregon at 11 a.m. Pacific time. The Buffaloes are playing for their first, their program best, at, with a 12th win. The athletic department is inviting all CU students to a free open house on the newly renovated Champion Center and indoor practice facility. The event will take place on April 26th from 11.30 to 1 o'clock p.m. The CU Spirit Squad will be in attendance and Chip will also be there if you want to get a sweet selfie for an Insta. There will be, a free, there will be free food from Half Fast and Papa John's. Students can also get a 20% discount at the CU Buffs team store during the event. Don't miss out on this great chance to see the new facility. Speaking of the CU Spirit Squad, we all know Ralphie and Chip are the best mascots in the Pac-12. But have you ever wondered how they came to be? Christine Lambert is in studio to give you the lowdown on why these two are all-time best. Hey Buff fans, I'm Christine Lambert with the very last Buff banter of the semester. <laughs> I see you a minute. Okay, I'm sorry. Alright, I'm totally good. Totally good. Okay. Did any of you ever wonder why the University of Colorado's mascot is the Buffalo? I know I have, especially considering there's technically no buffaloes in North America. Our mascot is actually a bison. Shh. But anyways, way back in 1934, the Silver and Gold newspaper, which was CU's newspaper at the time, had a contest for people to choose the mascot, and for some reason, the buffalo came out on top. And we are very thankful that it did, because if we hadn't, if it hadn't have come out on top, we wouldn't have the absolute best live mascot in the world, Ralphie. Also, we would still be calling our football team one of their many nicknames, which included Silver and Gold, the Silver Helmets, or even sometimes the Frontiersmen. The original Ralphie debuted her famous run around Folsom Field in 1967. It was the Buffs' homecoming game against Oklahoma State, and although the Buffs lost the game, a winning tradition was born. There have been a total of five bison to play the part of Ralphie over the past 40 years, Ralphie number 5 made her debut in 2008 at the home opener against Eastern Washington, which we won 31-24, to by the way. Fox Sports actually named Ralphie as the number 2 live mascot in college sports, only topped by the Texas Longhorns' Sturdy Steer. Fox mentions only how Ralphie is not only one of the most unique mascots in college sports, but she is especially awesome because she actively participates by running around the field before games and during halftime. All right, I'm going to toss it back to the desk now, as Ralphie would. Oh. The NBA playoffs are this weekend, and it got me thinking about former Buffs currently playing in the NBA. And we're not going to be going and talking about that yet, because we're going to be talking about a little college basketball first. Sounds good. CU men's basketball team is on the lookout for next year's star players with the 2016 signing season underway. So far, they have four new additions to the team, including 6'10", inch Lucas Seward, who signed his national letter of intent on Tuesday. The Buffs have also acquired 7-footer Dallas Walton and a pair of 6'4 guards, DeLon Brown and Bryce Peters. Head coach Tad Boyle is excited for the new recruits and is looking forward to next season. And now it's time for the NBA playoffs that are happening this weekend. And a couple of former buffs are currently playing in the NBA. There are four buffs on NBA rosters, and two of the four are suiting up for the playoffs. 
Andre Robertson, one of the most recent buffs to make it to the NBA, averaged five points and four rebounds in about ten minutes of playtime during the regular season. He's carved up a nice backup role for the talented Oklahoma City Thunder team. Detroit Pistons point guard Spencer Dinwiddie, also former buff, averaged five points during the regular season and about nine minutes of playtime. He's currently battling the number one seed Cavaliers and LeBron James. Good luck, boys, and you all make us proud. An eerie teenager has found a second home here at CU. From our affiliate at News Team Boulder, Bree Thomas met up with a 17-year-old who's excelling at an unusual sport. Jack Bradford isn't your typical teenager. While kids his age are swinging swords in video games, Bradford is doing it for real. The high school junior spends 13 hours a week practicing fencing at the Northern Colorado Fencers Club in Boulder. Mainstream sports have never really interested him. I think it's just because I want to do something a little different. I just saw it on the Olympics and I was always like really into lightsabers and stuff as a kid. So I kind of like, it's kind of a natural fit. Bradford has been fencing since he was 11 years old. He is the junior Olympic gold medalist and he attributes his success to his coaches, particularly Gary Copeland. He's kind of like a second dad, kind of. That just swears a lot more. <laughs> Fencing not only pushes Bradford physically, but also mentally. Most high school students are lucky to get a vacation out of state. However, fencing provides Bradford the opportunity to travel all over the world. And when he competes, he's treated like an athlete rather than a kid. Bradford's work ethic has impressed everyone at the club. He's had an awful lot of competitive success uh, when he's traveled, as you've, as you've heard about. So, so that's, um, that's Jack in a nutshell. He, he works really, really hard when he's here. He sets a really good example by his work ethic and his demands on himself. Bradford's love of lightsabers has led him down an amazing path. His family and fellow fencers are excited to see where it leads. He's been really a fixture since just about that time. I don't think there was really a time when he started where he wasn't here as much as he could be, um, trying to get better at fencing. Bradford recently won the Senior Men's Epe Championship, and he's looking for forward to many more of these amazing opportunities. Coming up, you know the buffs are faring academically. <laughs> and while we may not have won any awards for this show, there is one department in athletics that did. We'll tell you who went home with the bronze after the break. Our athletes have not only been succeeding in competition, but also in their classroom in the annual University of Colorado Academic Progress Rate, a report that tracks the academics of all Division I programs. For the fifth year in a row, the APR result, which is averaged across all sport programs, was highest in school history. Eight programs improved their APR score from last year, and seven schools accomplished a perfect score of 1,000. The men's cross-country team earned the NCAA's APR Recognition Award, achieving a perfect score of 1,004 years in a row. Great job, student-athletes. Well, Joe Paris and Tanner Bergamo will be missed the most of all of any of the graduating seniors. Maybe. Probably not. But they will leave us with one more edition of Man on the Street. I haven't seen this yet, so sorry for what's about to happen. Sports Mag fans, Joe and Tanner here at the UMC, and we're here to get ready for summer vacation on the last episode of Sports Mag and ask Buffs fans what they think about the year in CU Sports. It's a little cloudy out, but we're looking for some fun in the sun. But we uh, we came inside. We're gonna ask some people some fun sports stuff. It's gonna be sportsy. sportsy. What's your What's your name? Sam. Hi, Sam. Hey, man. How you doing? Sam, what was your favorite CU Sports memory of the year? Oh, of the year? Ooh, I love beating Arizona. See you beating Arizona in basketball this year. What was your favorite CU Sports moment of the year? Uh, probably when we stormed the b basketball court at the Arizona game, was it? And uh, made it to the NCAA tournament. Uh, what was your favorite uh, CU Sports moment of the year? Well, I was fortunate enough to be named the faculty coach of the day for CU versus Stanford. And so, as such, I got to go out to the middle of the field with the captains, co-captains from each team, and participate in the coin toss. And the number one impression that just bowled me over was, these guys are huge. Paul Vokes, everybody. Best sports moment. <laughs> uh, what was your favorite uh, CU sports moment? Too many to count. There you have it. So many great memories of CU sports.
We're here talking uh, CU sports and the future of CU sports. Uh, we're going to see if, oh, here's a young man. Get uh, out of here, jabroni. <laughs> Let The Rock tell you something. CU Sports is coming all the way back from the grave to the mountaintop. It'll be the Buffs. Well, Tanner, it's been a heck of a run at CU Sports Mag, and I'm glad we get to go out as the people's champion. You're right, Joe. Uh, we're men of the people, and it was great to spend our last time here talking with the people. And For CU Sports Mag, this is Man on the Street. That was Man on the Street with Joe and Tanner. Um, thanks, guys. I don't know what else to say about that. Just good luck in the real world. If you have ever been to a sporting event at CUU, you probably noticed some students, like myself, on the sidelines. Most likely, we're working for Buff Vision, a video department in athletics under the direction of Derek Swanson and Eric Poloni. Well, last spring, Buff Vision live-streamed the 2015 Pac-12 Women's Golf Tournament and entered that show into the 37th Annual Tele Awards. And guess what? They stole the bronze. There were over 13,000 entries, and I'm honored to be a part of the Buff Vision family, and thank you, Eric Poloni, for all your hard work. Well, coming up after the break, we're finally going to give you that trivia answer to the trivia question that we asked earlier. (laughs) And our favorite sports mag couple is back for their last edition of Rapid Fire. Thank goodness for that. Rapid Fire would be next, but we got something better. Stay tuned. Well, everyone's favorite couple, the Heartbreak Kid and his significant other, are back. One last time. On this show. And forever, I promise. It's safe to say these moments will forever, kind of maybe, be missed. We told you we had something better than rapid fire this week. And we've got the top three Joe Paris, Tanner Bergamo, all-time sports mag moments. That's right, Joe. And we're going to start you off with number three. It's when we first anchored together and we introduced the show as if we were on the Titanic. Joe, do you trust me? Tanner, never let go. I'm flying, Tanner. I'm flying! Sports Mag starts next. I think we're going to grow old together. I think we are, Joe. Let's take a look at number two. And number two is actually something that never aired on Sports Mag. It's an outtake from this week's Man on the Street. Let's take a look. I don't see anybody that knows how bright sports can be at CU Bold. Whoa, who are you? I'm Tanner. And I'm here to tell you that sports at CU are going to be bright. That's right, Joe. They are going to be bright. So bright, I had to put on my sunglasses for a second time. Not as bright as number one, though. What's the all-time number one moment? Of course, it's our press conference from last week's show. Let's relive the greatness. Poured our heart and soul into this project. And um, we even wrote a couple of readers over the years. Yeah, absolutely. You know, without a shadow of a doubt, Tanner and I were the hardest working members of Sports Mag. We got there, we got everything done, never messed around, and it really meant a lot to us. Well, there it is, the four-year Sports Mag career broken down into three clips. Tanner, that's all the time we got. That's all we got. Back to you guys at the desk. It's okay, you can finally exhale, because we have the answer to that nail-biting trivia question. In case you forgot, we asked, like, a little, a little while ago. Who is Esther Lee tied with for the second most top 20 finishes in a single season? And the answer is Emily Talley. Talley golfed for the Buffs from 2008 to 2012, and she had quite an illustrious run. As a sophomore, she earned the honor as CU's most valuable player and CU's female athlete of the year. In addition, she was named CU Athlete of the Week five times over the course of her career. This very special edition of Tweet of the Week comes from my very own co-anchor and her alter ego... Since the tennis team is wrapping up their season this weekend, just tweeted some words of encouragement for the Buffs. She said, good luck to the CU tennis team this weekend at Pac-12 championships. Hashtag squad goals, hashtag Pikachu. Really nice onesie, Jess. Kind of wish you wore that on the desk. I mean, I did choose you to co-anchor with me, and I really think that onesie deserves some airtime. I'm with you there, sister. Well, it's almost time to say goodbye, but before we do, our crew has put together a tribute video. Just something to look back at our time here at college and, of course, make us cry. So I'm sorry for all the ugly tears you're about to see. Jessica Malnick, a lovely person, my little Pikachu. She always puts a smile on my face, and she's been one of the best people that I could go to for advice. Jess, you always blew me away with the packages you made. Uh, They were, every single time, just phenomenal stuff. You're so nice, and nobody ever misses you because you've got such a big personality. You're such a joy to be around. You're always smiling. You are 
so funny and just so bubbly. I love you to death. Like the best co-winger I could ever ask for. Laura? Who is Laura? Which one's Laura? Oh, the one that's in charge? Oh, that Laura. Laura. Where do I even begin, dude? I think the thing I'm gonna miss the most about Laura is uh, making her mad constantly. Because uh, Joe and I would always do that. I miss her next year and all of the help that she gives everybody every week whenever we need something, whether it's related to Sports Mag or unrelated to the show. She's sort of always there to help out. She's really fun and she's light and she's bubbly and I love that, but when it comes down to the wire and there are decisions to be made, she has no problem telling it like it is. Laura is nice and she always seems like she like knows what's going on. She's gonna go really far in life. She's such a hard worker and she's like inspired me so much. Man, Laura's just been um, just such a fantastic teacher. I miss uh, just how well organized she was and working with her was always such a great experience. Laura, you were like the very first person when I came to Sports Mag at the beginning of this year that welcomed me and made me feel like I didn't need to feel intimidated walking into this and that I could make friends and that I could be really a part of the Sports Mag family. And she's always been there for me, whatever I needed, if I needed help with anything, she's just You made Sports Mag my family, and you took me under your wing, and I can't tell you how thankful I am for that. I don't think I would be where I am today if it weren't for you. It's a family, and I've honestly gained such a big family with you, with every senior, and I'm, I'm gonna miss you guys, and I'm gonna miss my family. Yes, yes. yes. Sports Mag! <laughs> <laughs> and that is it. We are done. We are finished. We are graduating. Aloha, see you, Boulder. It's been the realest, craziest, happiest, most stressful, and yet still the most wonderful four years of my life. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone out here in the um, control room. You guys are the best family I could ask for. I'm really honored to be your mom this year. Um, these have been the best four years of my life, and I'm so honored to have spent it with all of you weirdos. And just thank you guys for everything. Steve Jones and Greg O'Brien, you guys have been the best. And just thank you for everything. Um, stay tuned next fall, and that's all the time we have. Thanks. Yeah.